Close your eyes. Come on in. Another surprise guest for Stevie Weeby on the show. I think it's a female. I, I heard high heels or something. Like, uh -huh. did, those aren't men's shoes, I don't think. Leo P on the podcast right now. We figured we'd kick it off with a little jam. giraffe in here that's pretty cool that that's gerald gerald okay okay yeah. word i'm with it yeah yeah that's gerald he lives here in the garage okay <laughs> yeah i like that yeah he's on uh he's on uh, uh another podcast with uh my buddy uh stevie weeby yeah okay very nice yeah yeah and uh yeah he's a talking giraffe he's off screen so he's not gonna be able to talk right yeah. now but yeah you understandable know, you get it i get it i get it <laughs> what a great introduction to me and the show is like come in my garage do a podcast there's a talking giraffe <laughs> <laughs> nothing suspect here whatsoever yeah not not weird not, not weird, weird at all no not a weird garage dungeon 
<laughs> with stuffed animals. Dude, it's totally, it's just totally welcome to LA, man. Yeah, dude. I mean. <laughs> Hanging out in your garage. Honestly, I was so scared when I was walking because I was like, I think it's yours. But just on the off chance, I'm just like walking in the back of someone's driveway. Like, I'm just thinking about how strange that would be. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? There's like, just like giant case. Like, yeah. hey, I'm here for the podcast. Yeah, I look like I have like a disguise on too. You know what I mean? Just yeah. naturally. Like, oh, yeah. Well, I got to say, you are one of the cooler looking people who have done this podcast. Thank you. Thank and you. you said this is your first podcast ever, right? Very first podcast. Dude. Well, thank you for uh, letting it happen here. And yeah. uh, I, I got to say, I'm pretty stoked um, uh, just about uh, you being here and uh, us getting to jam because I've been following you as a musician mm-hmm, for a while mm-hmm. now. And uh, you uh, you already make me sound way better of a sax player than I already am just by carrying <laughs> most nice. of the weight of that tune. Yeah, yeah, hey, uh, man, it was but good. I, I love those oldies vibes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too. Right? Me it too. That was nice. That kind of swing. Just... It was. It was kind of like it had like a um, definitely like a retro feel to it. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm, I'm picturing like kind of like a mean mugging bartender kind of guy and like yeah, you know cleaning out a glass. There's like a girl in like a red dress, like kind of you know. <laughs> Got the red lipstick and. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe yeah. a martini or something. Maybe shit, martini. Though. Yeah, you know, yeah. There's a know. stain on the glass yeah, and he's kind of yeah. eyeing her and seeing yeah. what's going on. A guy yeah. approaches her from the darkness. Hey, Toots, how's it going? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> there's like a lot of guys in this bar. Hey. <laughs> but uh, I'm a little bit di- bit different. Yeah. Uh yeah, man. It's uh so you how long are you in LA for? I'm here until I leave Tuesday. Leave Tuesday. Leave Tuesday. Yeah, man. Thanks for fitting this in. Yeah, of course. Thank you for having me. Um I'm glad it, I'm glad it worked out, you know. Yeah, and you're doing uh, workshops and different stuff uh, right yeah, now right so out here, right? Basically, basically, um, at the beginning of like, uh, like beginning of like COVID and everything, tour stopped completely. I wasn't touring at all, so I started teaching a bunch. Um, doing the individual lessons was like nice. But it felt like some trippy version of like Groundhog Day where I'm like, right. I'm teaching the same things over and over again. This might be better if I had a class of people. Sure. You know what I'm saying? That way you can track growth and stuff like that. Yes. At least with individual people checking in like, hey, am I doing this better? Yeah. Or, right? Yeah. Or, yeah. I feel like it, it can be like, it, it can be like a little bit harder when it's like one on one because it's like, it's almost like someone's like always like interrupting like, oh, but what is the, it's like, let me just teach this thing. Yeah. And like, you can watch the replay. Ha, yeah. Ha, yeah. Let's get through this first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 So, I mean, I, I like giving private lessons too. It's just, um, I think it's just like draining in a different way. That's probably the best way to say it. Um, but like, I like, I like doing uh, classes better. So uh, me and my teaching partner, Grace Kelly, we kind of work as like a team. Amazing saxophonist. If you don't know who she is, follow her on Instagram. Uh, you guys are, uh, we are too sexy, right? Yes, we are too, too sexy. Yeah. yeah. So we started teaching together. Um, I feel like she's a little bit better with like the fundamentals. Um, not necessarily the fundamentals, but just like, the like I'm I'm a little better with more of like the extended techniques and like she's kind fundamentals of, your flair is yeah that yeah it's a that, little bit yeah. of a you know um but anyways it works really well and it's nice having like uh you know something to work with so we're like basically we're like building a bunch of different things um and uh we're trying to just like create like a teaching community yeah um you know what I'm saying uh and it's all through it's all through Zoom so. Yeah, so people um, can tune in from wherever. Yeah, exactly. Get lessons and stuff. So exactly. That, I mean, that's yeah. gonna be a huge, I mean, door yeah. opener for a lot of people mm-hmm. who you know who might be fans of your stuff. They're like, how yeah. does he do that one thing? Yes. You know, yeah. like because you have a like um, a very unique style in the way that you play the saxophone, which I think you know is part of the reason that people are drawn to your music is mm-hmm. it's very very unique. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So I came to L.A. because Grace is living here. Um, so she was supposed to live here for just like a few months, but I'm pretty sure she's just going to move here. Um, it's looking that way. Um, so I'm just coming to like hang out and make content, do a workshop, um, film music video. Yeah. Um, and, uh, do these exercise things that I'm really excited about, uh, which is basically just like a practice track with like a, like a, a beat and like me playing so break that down it's you playing <laughs> like some epic music and yeah. you're teaching people because you're also kind of known for your dance moves yeah, and stuff yeah exactly too. so people are probably like how does he move his feet like that yeah yeah so i'm doing some steps too and uh basically the idea is that you put it on you play to it 
Um, and it, it also like, it's supposed to be the. It's like supposed to be like fun and like also like running scales and like getting better and working yeah. on specific little things like working sure. on scales, working on modes, that kind of stuff, um, and different techniques that I use. So yeah, it's supposed to be like fun because like I don't know when I was a kid when I had to play like scales like it seemed really tedious sometimes. It's just like of course. Uh, do, do, oh, I gotta do, do, do this yeah, again. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, yeah. It's like if you're playing with a metronome, you might as well play with a beat. Like you know. Sure. So that's kind of my. Uh, whole thing and then it's like you can play along with me and then also you'll get the uh the practice track without me so you could do the me part without me um anyway so that's what i'm doing here basically the next few days yeah building yeah. it up yeah. yeah most people who try out la for a little bit i think that they get like oh i think i might have to move here like, yeah yeah yeah. you, you get a I little like bit it. of that i like it I like it. Well, you're I'm you're fun. an East Coast guy, right? Yeah, yeah, born yeah. and raised East Coast. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was I was born in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Um, I lived in New York for a long time. I live in Philly now. Mm -hmm. Um, I like Philly a lot, but LA is cool. I do mean, you ever, do you ever go to the Helium Comedy Club there? Have you ever been there? I have never been there, honestly, but a I've heard any, it's great. Anytime you want to go, let me know. I know most of the comics who roll through there, really, and I know the management. And I, I, if you want tickets or something, I'll just put you and some friends on the guest list. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. Serious? Oh, there's there's great comedians are always going through there. And uh, yeah, I know the the people who run the club. So uh, and it's probably pretty close to you. If you're in Philly, it's, yeah, it's like yeah, right, yeah, yeah. right there. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've heard of it. I've heard good things about it. Yeah. So um, have you been to many comedy shows in general? Um, No, honestly. Yeah. Uh, I want to, but I just it just. I don't know. No one like really like asked me to go to a comedy show. Sure. I never. I went to like the next time you're in LA, you have a little bit more time. I'll show you the comedy store. Yes, because it's it's you know it's amazing. It's like yeah. where everybody. It's... I want. I want to. I want to. I saw like. I feel like maybe the only time I went to see Jim Jeffries one time. Okay, cool. A few years ago. Yeah. In New York, and that was wild. Were you? Did he? Was he doing like a big venue, or was he doing a smaller club at the he, time? He was doing a pretty big venue. It was the mm. Beacon Theater. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that was pretty good. <laughs> Not, but, uh, yeah, yeah. Like, it was a pretty big venue. Yeah, it was kind of. It's all right. Yeah, yeah. But um, he would like he went on for like I just remember it being like way past like when the show was like supposed to be done. Oh, like, he I've, did like two or three hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like that vibe. That happens. Yeah, sometimes uh certain headliners when they have the theater or something like that, yeah. they're like, well, they're here to see me. I'm I'm doing as much time as I want. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? yeah. Like like I'll, I'll, yeah. I'm gonna go for it. And they want to soak up as much of that as possible. Like mm -hmm. I'm in the Beacon Theater. Let's go for it. Yeah. Let's give yeah. these guys a show. It was uh yeah it was great, but um I, yeah I just it's like. I like stand-up comedy. I just, I never, yeah, it was just never like part of like my, like, like what my friends do. You know what I mean? Like, Well, it's also like, it, it's, it has a lot, I think, to, to do with um, what you watched growing up too. Because mm -hmm. like, if it's part of your culture growing up and like watching stand-up a lot as a kid, then you're going to want to go to a comedy club. Yeah. Like, did you have certain musicians that you watched growing up that like helped you kind of like get oh. into sax and stuff yeah, like that? I'm yeah, sure. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, like when I first started playing, like, um, do you know who Maynard Ferguson is? I don't think so, actually. He's a trumpet player, but anyways, I saw his band. It was ridiculous. And then like, uh, I saw like a very one of my first concerts I ever saw was George Clinton, and that was like wild. Um, so that definitely got was me. Was that into one of saxophone. your first like eye opening? Like, whoa. Yeah. 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 Cause it was like an amphitheater, and everyone was just grooving, and like. It was just like seeing the audience, like, just like, it looked like everyone was like in love. Like, mm -hmm. that's what I remember thinking. I'm like a kid. I'm like, it looks like everyone is in love, right? right. You know what I mean? I'm so like, did you, Ooh. did you see that? And you're like, okay, I wonder if I could recreate that. Yeah. I mean, I just felt like I wanted to be part of it somehow, you know? Yeah. Um, and I want to be part of my life. One of my, my first saxophone experience, the, like one of the reasons I wanted to start playing an instrument is a way more boring <laughs> version of that story. Yeah. When I, I saw a sax player and it wasn't like anything special or anything. It was literally mm -hmm. like hymnals at a church, but there was a saxophonist and it sounded so different from obviously the piano and the trumpets and stuff like that. I was like, who is that guy? I'd never seen him there. I was like, Oh, that guy and he was playing it and he, it's like a very bland like normal white guy but he had good tone and i was just like that sounds so cool like i want to try that out and i asked my mom and my dad's like 
can I can I try the saxophone? They're like, the saxophone? Really? Like, where did this come from? I was like, I don't know. I just want to try it and then yeah. start taking lessons and stuff. Well, the the specific saxophone thing, like I knew I wanted to play music at that time, but I actually started on clarinet just because oh. my mom had a clarinet. Okay. So that was my first instrument, but it wasn't because I like thought it was cool. I was just like... Well, music is a big part of your family, right? Because yeah. your dad... Yeah, my dad plays the accordion. Yeah. Um, and originally when I, growing up, we used to play like Italian polkas together. Um, and because uh, my dad's Italian... I'm Italian. I mean, my dad's Italian, so I guess I'm. Ita- I hope. I hope I'm Italian. Hope wait, so. wait, wait, wait! I'm dad, actually not. Yeah, my the, dad is a long this story. This is the moment you find out. Like, wait, am I not my dad's son? Wait, <laughs> wait. Huh? Oh no, I'm not Italian. But my last name's Pellegrino. How is no, this happening? No wonder my dad says every night, "You're not Italian," <laughs> crying <laughs> over a bottle son, of wine. I don't know how to tell you this. You're not Italian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyways, <laughs> <laughs> so I started on clarinet and honestly, dude, like I just had a very distinct, like, you know, opinion of people at that age and I was playing clarinet and I just could not find one clarinet player I thought was cool at all. Mm-hmm. Like I just couldn't, like it just wasn't like, uh, you know, a role model I could find. There's a lot of clarinets in the, the church band and uh, <laughs> nobody very cool. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. And I actually think I remember seeing just like, it was like some random dive bar. They're playing like Mustang Sally. And I just remember seeing the sax player just like, he had his hat on. It was like kind of over his eyes. And he was just like drinking a beer and just like, do, 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 do. Like drinking a beer or more. I was like, this guy is cool. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> And I remember being like, oh, I know you could like switch from clarinet to sax really easy. Sure. So. How long were you playing clarinet before you made the jump to sax? Um, Like three years. And was it Barry right away or did, was it no, alto, tenor, Barry? It was tenor. It was tenor, tenor right away. Gotcha. Tenor right away. Um, Yeah, that was dope. My mom bought me a tenor off of eBay. Great. Um, Right? Yeah. And so the guy who sent me the tenor was like, really just a nice dude and he really cared about me like and he made like this is like you know cds like before i even had like an ipod or anything he made like a hundred cds of like all his favorite saxophone players that's he's, like, so nice he of this guy 100 cds that's yeah that's so nice he With sent like sax. a booklet yeah yeah and so i just like listened to those just on repeat for like years that's so cool man just any and it was just like marked under like all the saxophone players like by name like wow. so just like be like it'd be like early john coltrane like middle john coltrane late john coltrane so it just was like this huge i had this huge library growing up just from this one guy that my mom bought a sax from him on ebay have you reached out to that guy since honestly i i have not i kind of just remembered about him right now do you remember his name uh i don't if you looked at it maybe i, I could find it i could find maybe it find it that could be a really cool reconnection story yes. that is a, that is such a cool thing of this guy to go out his way because 100 cds a if you grew up with with cds like we did uh that's a lot of burning of of music and yeah, stuff like that yeah yeah that's a lot of time and then yeah. also categorizing it for you yeah like this dude is like no, like I want this kid to have the knowledge that yeah. goes with this sax. He cared about that sax yeah. a lot. Apparently. And it's like he he doesn't and he also like he didn't like know me. He didn't know if I was just gonna be like, Oh, this is stupid. Right, and you might like, throw, throw it away. Kick yeah. it to the curb. Like yeah, or, yeah. or like uh you try it one week and then you're like, I'm not a sax guy, I'm a drum guy. You like yeah. move to that at, at grade yeah. school, that's how that works. Yeah, exactly. And I remember at the time like I didn't even have a way to play CDs yet. Like, so like I was like like my, I was like talking to my parents. And I was like, "Please, I need a CD player. I need a CD player." Yeah, and I remember. Um, I eventually, I I got a CD player, but it was this weird, like, giant, like, shelf CD player. It was like, <laughs> sure, sure. It was like a furniture CD player. Oh yeah. Um, and we had a uh, furniture TV set. I know exactly what you're you, talking you about. Where it's I'm like saying? it's half furniture, half electrical. Where you're like, why yeah, did they yeah, do this? Yeah, it's very, it's very like cyborgy. Yeah, you know um part plant part you know machine <laughs> yeah like, yeah so yeah so i had that thing but then eventually i specifically remember like buying like a cd player that was like green like bright neon green i would just go everywhere with it i was just that kid you know like yeah just, yeah, yeah exactly so that was cool then my then my <laughs> Then my one of my colleagues who played barry sax when i was like in let's say ninth grade mm-hmm. uh he got 
expelled from school. He was like always getting in trouble. Uh, and he, I guess he like pulled out a knife on somebody. Some like, yeah. So, so far, the way that you're attracted to different sax players' style is the guy who's <laughs> drinking at the bar, yeah. the guy who, who at school who stabbed somebody. You're like, I gotta be a sax player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, so I took over for him when, right. he, when he was. So I killed that kid. <laughs> yeah. and I took over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. So, so continue. So, so he. So he, so he got expelled. So they like needed a Barry Sax player. So I was like, I'll do it. Wow. I'm into it. So you're his fill-in. Yeah. I was his fill-in. Wow. I became the new him. Yeah. So, yeah. Is that when I you remember. started developing your n- unique style, the way you dress and stuff? Yeah. Well, the thing <laughs> when is- did, When did that come along? I used to dress way crazier when I was like, I, I like back when I was like nine to like 13, 14, like- yeah. I was really going like I would wear like two or three hats and I would like wear Hawaiian shirts almost every single day. And your parents were just supportive and cool. Yeah. Yeah. They That's were dope. like they were like There's like, yeah. Yeah, whatever you want. Like I would wear like Hawaiian shirts and like bowling shoes and like it, it was a very strange thing. I wear multiple hats. I remember that was like my thing. I was like, Yeah. I wear two hats. Like you know, it's like someone does that as a joke for a second, and it's like, oh, okay, but, right. but it's like, no, I just did that. Yeah, that's my style now. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> but um, I don't know. I feel like I feel like I definitely like conform conformed a little bit because I feel like people really felt like I was weird. I had like trouble getting friends when I dressed really, really crazy. When you dressed too out there, people were yeah. like, oh, he's not approachable anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So then I went through like a weird phase where I was like, went completely the other way. Cause I was like, um, oh, I'm, I'm cool. Like polos. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Like I'm yeah. chill. I have normal. khakis just yeah. like you guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 So, um, there was definitely like one, I feel like there was just this snap. I think it's probably puberty related, honestly, where it's like, one second, I'm like, I'm going to wear the craziest stuff and have the most fun and be super weird and out there. And then I'm like, oh, I'm going to like try to be a little more normal and chill out a little bit. You know what I mean? I just felt like one day all of a sudden like being like cool or not weird at least was like really important to me. I you know. So I did this in um, in eighth grade was my I went to like a private Christian school growing up through like seventh grade. Wow. Right. And then in eighth grade, I, I did my first year in public school. Uh-huh. And uh, that was the first year where I was like legitimately like the class clown kind of guy. Yeah, and yeah, I yeah. loved it. Like, you yeah, know what I mean? Like yeah. I felt that. And so <laughs> freshman year comes around and I have a decision to make based off where I lived. Uh, there was two high schools, one that was feeding in from the middle school that I went to or this brand new high school that they had just built. And my aunt taught there and she goes, you should come to my, this school. It's going to be best. Like they're going to have an amazing basketball team, all this stuff. So she yeah, hyped yeah. it up to me. I'm like, you know what? Yeah, I'll try out this new high school, even though I just made a year of really good friends at yeah, this middle yeah, school. Yeah, yeah. So I started over. But the problem was I, I had this energy of the class clown that I had just had that class clown yeah. confidence from the other school. Mm-hmm. I out weirded everybody there to the point where like I was not a pro like I went too hard in the paint in the weird yeah yes. and that was like my fr- and I literally at semester I hated the school so much because I dug myself such a hole I'm like I-, I have to transfer to the other school yeah, yeah. and I literally switched schools Whoa. back to and then like my friends who I made at the other school I'm like hey guys I'm back and like some people were a little bit like really but for the most part everybody's like dude it's so good to have you yeah, back and I was like yeah, yeah. <laughs> accepting yeah so like I I get the weird yeah. thing totally it's, yeah it's, it's weird like you have to like ease into it, otherwise you you look just like a crazy person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like my dad is like mad weird, dude. He's mad like interesting. My parents are both weird. Um, well, they're both like artist types, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, they're both they're they're cool. Um, like super supportive, crazy supportive. I feel so lucky. Like that's one of the reasons I feel the most lucky is just having parents that are super supportive that really want me to pursue music mm-hmm. and we're cool about it. Um, my dad was like mad weird. He always did these like trippy plays. He like wrote plays. And so like I used to act like even since I was like five years old, I was like in acting and plays with my dad. Um, so, you know, I definitely like he just does whatever he wants, wears whatever he wants. And like he just has his own vibe. And I feel like I definitely and like my mom is like, you know, she dresses interestingly too. Um, and, uh, I think I just was like, this is me. 
And everyone's like, okay, well, you go be yourself and right. buy yourself. Go you know? blossom, son. Yeah. And then yeah. it's like, and then it's like, I just was like, oh man, I have to wear like, I feel like, I remember like the first day I wore jeans being like a big deal. You're like, I was I'm like, a sellout. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. What am yeah, I yeah, doing? Yeah. <laughs> I wear like big like polka dot pants and yeah. like, I mean, you know, like just wild stuff. <laughs> yeah, the clown and, starter pack at a Halloween store. You're yeah, like, can yeah. I wear the first day of school? Dude, this dates back to like preschool. I used to wear like, okay. <laughs> this makes me feel so embarrassed. Like all the kids like Batman. And I was like, fuck Batman. Like, I, I don't want to be Batman. I like Robin. Right. Yeah, because I was like, he's just, he's different. He's not Batman. Like, everyone yeah. like Batman. You're like, that's too mainstream. That's too mainstream yep. for me. That's too I'm easy. Like, I'm like, actually, Robin was the best character in Batman. <laughs> And so, have you seen when he develops into Nightwing? It's a pretty cool oh, storyline. Nightwing, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, Nightwing yeah. is sick, dude. I love Nightwing. I want Nightwing a Nightwing is, movie so yeah. bad. Oh my god. Dude. Yeah. Who would play Nightwing? That's the question. Well, they hinted at it with Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Oh, that's perfect. Did you did you notice that they kind of hinted at that? And, yeah, yeah, and yeah. In, in the Dark Knight Rises. Dark Knight, yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. were like, yeah, you're right. He, it, you're right. I remember that. that if he did it, it, I think that'd be pretty cool. That's perfect. Yeah, perfect I think fit. that'd be a good one. Um. It would be great if it was in the dark, like Night Rises, like vibe. I know they keep trying to they they're trying to find it again. But yeah. once Christopher Nolan like did his like, yeah. I mean that's my favorite. That's my favorite. Yeah, yeah. All the Dark Knight like now. Okay, I just said this whole fuck Batman thing. Now <laughs> once I'm older, that Batman I'm down with. Yeah, I'm down with that Batman. Anyways, when I was in when I was in preschool, I wore a Robin costume. Okay. And my mom bought me like three so she could like wash them and I'd wear it every single day. Oh, you were yeah, I was you're one of those kids. Yeah. Who's yeah. like, you, you know, you see certain kids with like the Superman shirts every day or the Batman mm -hmm. shirts. And you're like, I'm Robin. I'm Robin. Because yeah. no one was like, Robin's my favorite. Of course. And your mom, when she found the Robin like costume, she's like, yeah. I better buy three of these because this is probably the only three out there. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The Jeremiah Wonders podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Is there anything interfering with your happiness or standing in the way of your goals? Guess what? Therapy is no longer for wussies. I went to couples counseling with my wife and guess what? It helped our marriage. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with a licensed professional therapist. With BetterHelp, you can start communicating in less than 48 hours. This is not a crisis line. This is not self-help. BetterHelp is professional therapy delivered securely online. BetterHelp therapists have a broad range of expertise and are available worldwide. You don't have to live in a big city to get specialized mental health services anymore. Thank God. Log into your BetterHelp account anytime to send a message to your therapist. With BetterHelp, you will get timely and thoughtful responses. Better than a dating app, it's BetterHelp. Schedule weekly video or phone sessions at your convenience. With BetterHelp, you won't have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room ever again. BetterHelp is more affordable than traditional offline therapy, and financial aid is available. Changing counselors is easy and free, just in case you don't feel it. Join the over one million people who have gotten help from an experienced professional to take charge of their mental health. BetterHelp is so popular that they are recruiting additional therapists in all 50 states. Look out, world. BetterHelp has a special offer for Jeremiah Wonders listeners. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Jeremiah for 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Jeremiah for 10% off your first month. BetterHelp.com slash Jeremiah. Sign up for BetterHelp to start living a happier life today. Enjoy. Now let's get back into this episode with Leo P. And again, that's part of like, part of it is definitely my parents because like some parents might not be like, might be like, you have to wear different clothes. This is yeah. weird. Like, you know, so they let me be weird, but they also like, let me find out like, you know, some of the negative sides of being weird. It's like people treat you like you're weird, even though like, I don't know. I don't even know what weird even means. Like, I don't know if I was weirder than the average person, but um, then like, uh, I, I basically eventually started we like wearing more normal stuff. Mm -hmm. I went through a weird Hawaiian shirt, like clownish phase. And then one day I was just like, oh, I, I, I like bought a pair of jeans and I was just like, all right, I'm doing it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I just started trying to like dress more chill. And then I feel like I went through 
a like revolution of like there was a long time when like i was playing like when i first got like like discovered or people started first noticing me as a musician what was the first like real th- it was some of the too many zoos stuff right? yeah it was yeah. too many zoos it was like 2013 or something that's yeah i feel like your video got obviously a bunch of those videos are viral but like that's when it started like getting like passed around a lot yeah, of like yeah have you See, that was like, like the first like like million viewed thing that I had ever done. You what know? is that feeling like for a kid from Pittsburgh to see a million views like with your music online? Is it kind of mind blowing? Like at first yeah, for you yes. and your family? At first it was it has like, to be. It was like drugs. Because I'm from Kansas and and like it's just it's so foreign. Like because for years like when I started doing YouTube like a long time ago, like mm-hmm. in middle school and high school. And a lot of my stuff, if I got a hundred views, I was like, "Yeah, a hundred people saw this. <laughs> like, if you put all those people in a room, like, that's great. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, like, yeah, yeah. The, as you get older, like, and you have more context and stuff like that, it's still like, it's still a lot. But it's like, it's crazy, like that kid from Pittsburgh to see, like, yes, just you know, because now you have a bunch of viral videos and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, got to yeah. be cool for you and your family to be like, wow your parents were supportive and seeing that through and then they're seeing the cool stuff that you're doing now it's pretty yeah. awesome it is totally awesome and it was great it was like the feeling was like it was so exciting it was so yeah. exciting so cool so like i did it like i knew i could do it right. and like i felt like it was like the scene felt kind of like dark like at my school and just around it was like you know so many like so few musicians really like you know can make a living playing music it's not yeah. it's not a, a given thing um especially like that fast you know like i basically um i graduated from undergrad mm-hmm. and then that summer i was like what did you study uh was it music yeah yeah, like I, that? yeah i went to yeah. manhattan school of music cool and uh, um, I studied uh, jazz sax, mm-hmm. and that first like that first summer, I remember being like, okay, I definitely don't have enough gigs to pay my rent. Like I lived in Harlem. Yeah, I definitely don't have enough gigs to pay my rent. And like I had played in the subway a few times, so I was like, okay, I'm gonna start like doing it a lot. Like just because it wasn't like I really wanted to. I was like, oh, I just love playing the subway every single day. Um, it's more like uh, I just really needed to make money. It's yep. like it's like the difference between like climbing a rope and like climbing a rope where there's like fire at the bottom where you have to versus yeah. oh this is just a fun gym class. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Where it's like if with the fire gods to me, I'd have to like move back to Pittsburgh with my parents and yeah. be like, I like didn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Were your parents ever concerned for your safety doing the subway thing? Because, you know, there's it's some crazy people sometimes in the New York subway system. Yeah. My mom was a little like worried about me being in New York in general. Yeah um because i i do stand out and i do like to just i don't know be goofy yeah, and stuff and just like people either that's the thing people are either drawn to it and love it yeah. or you know you can anger some people just because they're like uh, that's different and yeah, you know what yeah, i mean like, yeah so um i think that honestly when i first started like playing the subway i don't think my parents were too like worried because uh the drummer that plays with us uh, he goes by the king of sludge mm-hmm. and he's he's like a lot older than me and he, my he's met my parents and i feel like they have kind of like a trust so it's like it's almost like i have a chaperone right you right, know right. what i mean it's yeah. like i was like you know 20 but like he was like a lot older you know like so it just it felt like a lot safer because he really knew the streets well and just knew where to play when to play who to mess with who not to mess with right like it, let's keep moving kind yeah, of thing yeah, he's yeah. had he had the street smarts that you needed and so it put your parents at ease kind of yeah like there are certain little things that like you know street musicians or buskers the certain little holes they fall into sometimes that like can really be detrimental to playing in a spot like for example you know my go-to thought is like if a cop's like telling us like you better pack up you gotta leave right now but my thought is like well what like why why do we have to you know why we have to go like we're allowed to play here man you know whatever yeah yeah and like he was just like, nah, like be really nice to the cops. Like what you're not realizing is like this is literally your coworker. Mm-hmm. This is not the last time you're gonna see this guy. You're gonna see this guy all the time. Yeah. So if you if you just say like, oh no problem, uh, have a good day, officer. Then it's like the next time he might be like a little be like, all right, you guys can play, but like you know, be a little more quiet. Or right. like before you know it, it's like 
um, his guys like taking selfies with me and yeah, stuff. And we're now talking. you have a working relationship. Yeah. And then and then he's like, hey guys, like just to give you a heads up, you got like ten more minutes. Yes, like, yes. I, I gotta, ha- you know, uh, the chief man. <laughs> he's like, you know? trying, yeah, he's like, dude, this guy's on my back right now. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, but like, dude, can we like totally do a selfie real quick? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and I feel like there's definitely a lot of street performers where it's like they'll get into like fights where it's like they don't think about the long term aspect of it. Um, so, anyways. I started doing that shit and like that was a vin- that was actually really addicting. Like once I got into it, it was really Well, you're addicting. seeing right away like the busking, you're literally getting paid for your talent right away. It's immediate, mm-hmm. which is, you know, the great thing about as stand up, you know, which, which I have to compare. I haven't done much busking, but the immediacy with the laughs is yeah. such like like you said, it's kind of like a drug. We're like, yeah. "Oh, wow, I love this." Yeah. Have you ever had any like dangerous incidents happen like with busking where something like crazy happened where um, where you were scared where you're like, oh, like this is like the, something might go down. Maybe if it didn't, but it, like something might. Um, nothing like particularly. Uh, there there was a there like there was a time that there was like a bit of a a bit of a weird vibe with these break dancers. They like same territory kind of thing yeah same territory Ah. and it was like a weird thing where this is actually a different band that i was busking with so i first started busking with this band called the dramatics Mm -hmm. and the king of sludge was part of the dramatics Mm -hmm. and uh that's how i met him and we we ended up going off and doing our own thing um but when i was in the dramatics the guy that was in the dramatics didn't necessarily like the leader he didn't necessarily see things the same way the king of sludge does and he was a little bit more like you know, like like the way he'd be with the break dance at this point, he'd be like, "They're just gonna like." I don't want to like. I, I, I'm like I'm like saying this about all like break dancers listening to this that like played the subway. Like, you got a problem, bro? <laughs> the, like, yeah, there's literally people like who are break dancing at home that are like, "Dude, what's he about to say, dude? What's he yeah, yeah. seriously, dude? Like, <laughs> yeah. If he says one word it, wrong, I'm gonna be so pissed." <laughs> yeah, it, it's like when you're in the subway. There's all these like weird like different people and like sub like category and like different genre and like. They just all happen to be a certain way, you know. They're all like all the breakdowns are like really strong dudes that like have yeah. kind of like a little bit of an extra like you know uh, zing to them, and it's like they'll leave the spot, but they'll just like be kind of weird about it. It's just like a little like you know, it's not worth it vibe. Yeah. Um, and it got into a weird almost fight thing, um, and then the cops came and it was like a three way thing. So w- w- was yelling going on like between the two yeah. parties kind of thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, how, how did it escalate to there where where you guys like started yelling at each other? Well, I wasn't really yelling at anybody. Right. So, I was, so do you just have your berry and you're like like between the two parents yeah. that are fighting kind of thing? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I'm like I'm like 21 at the time. Oh, so you're not wanting any trouble at all. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're like, dude, I just moved to New York. I don't want any of this. Yes, exactly, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And so the other guys out in the band were a little bit more, like a little bit older, a little bit more like tough at the time. Sure. And so I was just kind of like, whoa, I don't know, you know, this is like my like second month on the job or something, you know? Mm -hmm. So I don't really remember exactly what happened, but it became like really intense and like, there was some like, let's go outside. Let's do it. Let's do it. We're going to do it. Like, blah, blah, blah. they're like going to fight. And then like the cops were like, you guys better not be talking about fighting. Like, blah, blah. And it was yeah. like a whole thing. Um, so anyways, but there was other times that were just like, like a homeless guy shit himself, like right when we were, when we were playing. <sighs> and so that was like, that was definitely like scary in a different did way. You, did you... <laughs> keep playing throughout it or 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 was it, that or is that took, red flag on the field like it, it took a while to figure it out i mean surprisingly it took a while you're like you're like i think someone farted really bad yeah yeah i think someone like, farted is really that the weird. saxophone that's making that sound or yeah. is that that guy what's yeah. happening and uh, it took us a while to really figure it out and um no, we kept playing. We kept playing that we didn't even necessarily leave. Real professional right here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We were we were not going to let that stop us. Yeah. Um There's another time that like a homeless guy was smoking crack um at at while we were playing. Yeah. You know, that was that was annoying because you kept on being like, listen, bro. <laughs> You're like, so nice to be like, there was a guy smoking crack. It was a little bit annoying. We tried to, you know, keep playing. Yeah. <laughs> and he was being such an asshole, too. We were, we were li- I was being so nice. I was like, dude, like, I don't even care if you smoke crack. I don't. I don't. What you do with your crack is fine. 
I, I'm not gonna judge you, but just don't. It looks bad on us. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, like, like wait, is that a new member of Too Many Zoos? Yeah. <laughs> like, what's going on? Yeah, because he was. That's the thing is, he was very much like hanging out with us, and you know, just like being. It was oh, like, dude, he bro. was vibing for yes. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he, this is good. Crack and yeah. sax. This is a new dope combination. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the only person I feel like that really feels. I mean, uh, somebody else is. Smoke crack and listen to sax. I'm yeah, sure. I'm sure. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. Yeah, totally. Sorry. Uh, that's insulting to history. Of to course. say that that didn't happen. Yeah, of course. But this guy uh, was living it up, and uh, yeah, he wouldn't really just leave. So yeah. Um, it just makes us look bad, you know. <laughs> um, I had a friend that played a festival that he said like, I it was like a time when like he did it. It was like very early on he had like mm-hmm. a new agent or something and like he didn't really know him that well they played this festival called and people were just openly doing meth mm. just openly yeah that's rough maybe maybe you should uh bleep out just in case like they get mad at me because sure you know what i mean i'll they... bleep out the yeah you said it twice i'll bleep it out yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. maybe i don't know maybe i don't care all right. Anyways, there's Guess just... what? It's unbleeped now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude. That's right, We're Tribal going Connection. Uncensored Tribal Connection. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah tribal yeah. Connection. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, yeah. It's so, it's, yeah, it's okay. Honestly, that's something I think about a lot is like, whenever you're like, whenever you're doing comedy and stuff, like, do you ever like worry about like jokes about that are like true or based on true or is that weird? With, I mean, I, I listened to the family reunion, so I'm 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 figuring that it's like oh thank it's, you first it's of chill. all for checking that yeah, out yeah I enjoyed yeah. it I yeah. enjoyed it oh yes. good 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 yes yes um so I had to make a decision during that specifically because I didn't know the whole premise of my special uh, family reunion is uh, the comedy club sat my family in the front row if if you haven't seen it and uh, they didn't tell me. <laughs> and I walked out kind of being blindsided. Oh, okay, so they really didn't tell you. I thought it was shtick. No. It was not shtick. No, that was not shtick. Wow. So me, when I'm talking about it, wow. I'm literally trying to not have a mental breakdown. I'm talking it out like, oh, you guys, okay, you're here. Yeah. It's me literally processing, how am I going to handle the show? How, what am I going to do for the next hour? I have an hour right now, and they're all wow. right here. So... I made the decision to double down and I was like, I'm going to do the exact show that I was going to do, even if my, I, my parents were not attending that show. Uh And so I went for it as much as I could, but like, there's definitely early on in my relationship with my wife and stuff like that, her mom would come and I would have jokes about, you know, certain sexual stuff with my wife. And for the longest time, if her parents were coming, I would not do certain material. Yeah. 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 But as I started like being with her longer, mm-hmm. I started not censoring myself at all. And I was like, you're going to get the same show that everybody else is going to yeah, get. And yeah, it's like, yeah, it's kind of yeah. like, you have to deal with like, you're coming to my show. Like I'm not yeah. going to tailor it. So you kind of have to make that decision after a while. Yeah. It's weird, but like, that uh, is weird. But you yeah. kind of have to draw a line and saying like, this is my work. This is what I do. Like if you yeah. like it, awesome. If you don't, uh. <laughs> see, yeah, I feel I feel so lucky personally that like I just play saxophone and it's like I don't have to really deal with like people thinking I have any type of like intent on anything, sure, you know? Like sure. they have no idea like I could just be like, I wanna murder you all, like I'm thinking that in my head, you <laughs> yeah, know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. Really noodling on the sax, just yeah, having yeah. crazy thoughts. It's like, it's oh, like, he seems like a nice guy. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. So like it's really like I, I just I like that and like it's like anytime I write lyrics, like I just like I really respect that a lot. Like just doing comedy, like it seems like the scariest thing in the world to me. Like just stand up, just so up stand up. Then when you go to a show, what I want you to look for as a musician yeah. is um, what I think you'll appreciate because since I'm a, I, I don't claim to be like a, an amazing saxophonist. I love saxophone, but I'm a comedian, you know, who happens to play yeah. sax and then who is I've worked it in th- to my comedy because it's a unique thing where. There's not many comedians who still play sax. So yeah. I'm kind of in the comedy community. I'm known as somebody It's like I'm a comedian who plays saxophone. Like, yeah, like if yeah. you hear sax, like, hey, I need a guy who plays sax for this comedic music video. Jeremiah. Yes. It's that kind of thing. Yes. It's um, comedic sax. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> comedic sax. But it's one of those things where, yeah, I lost my train of thought. Um, 
I forget completely what we were talking about. I have no idea why I just blacked out. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Me too. Maybe someone like came in with one of those like, um, you know, uh, men in black things. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Change the subject. Yeah. We, and we wouldn't know because they like did that. Like maybe that's like someone came in the garage, came in here, I like, know. did some weird stuff, then did that. We wouldn't know. Yeah, we wouldn't I rarely know. lose my train of thought uh, on this uh, show, yeah. but. I had a, a dangerous incident happen. I was busking. I've only bust a couple times. Okay. And it wasn't with sax. It was with a uh, guitar in Venice Beach. Okay. And there was a fight that broke out between what looked like two different gangs of skateboarders. Okay. And I was playing guitar on the sand on Venice Beach. And literally two groups of like six guys with skateboards started hitting each other with skateboards like to the face and stuff. Oh my God. And I literally God. go, like it was the nerdiest thing. I go, <laughs> I fell back in the sand because it was so shocking. I literally didn't know what to do. And then I looked at my friend, I go, we gotta get out of here. <laughs> and then we like booked it out as fast as we could. Yeah. 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 Do you do any acting stuff? Like I do, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like you got a really good like, uh, like those voices, I was like, whoa, like that's really like, you got like a good Where, like. Where's this coming from? Yeah. yeah, like I was like, this is really good. Like your like tone, it's like very cartoony, like whoa. Oh, like, so this is, I, I lost my train of thought. This is what I want you to look for the next stand-up okay. show that you go to. Yeah, yeah, okay, we got it. Okay, um, there is a musicality in comedy that is that you will appreciate being a great musician like yourself. Uh -huh. When you watch stand-up, uh, there are what I call, um, and other comics call it, um, beats in sets. Okay. And you'll notice really, uh, it's just kind of like when you're doing your solos where you're building up and you're going up a chromatic scale, like da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah. Like that's when people, well, that's when the comedian is hammering like fast punchlines and stuff. And uh -huh. then there's a resolve. And then there's like kind of like resetting the room for the next bit or the next thing. And mm -hmm. there's, you'll, you'll notice like you'll see the music like right in front of you. Like if you're looking at like it from like a musician perspective. And it's like kind of cool. Okay, okay. Because then you, you'll just have a different appreciation like oh i see what they're doing there this is like what i do like when i bring it down before uh -huh. i really floor it and bring it back up yeah because you're, you're a showman uh -huh. like you really know how to control an audience mm -hmm. like like that's i mean that's something that's very unique about you when i first saw you play saxophone actually you were one of those people and i'm sure you've gotten this a lot over the years you changed the way that i looked at saxophone Okay. Because the I was ignorant to what you could even do with some of the overtones and the different things that you're doing with your unique sounds and stuff that you are producing out of a sax. I, I literally, my mouth dropped one of the first times I saw some, one of your videos. I was like, I didn't know you could do that on sax. Yeah. yeah. And that's like, a, that's a big compliment to you. Thank you. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's awesome. I had like legit like deniers that like they're like oh that he's not doing that like, oh i bet it would be like the biggest compliment i'm like my sound is so crazy you don't believe it's real it's like, the best that is yeah. the best compliment you can receive yeah 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 my favorite compliment comparing to comedy because that's all i have <laughs> is uh if somebody if i'm doing something that um is improvised that's just off the top of the head and people come up to me after the show and they're like uh that was planned man I go, no. And they yeah. go, no, 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 no. That was, I know that that was like something you do all the time. I go, I've never done that before. That's that's a big compliment because they think they're like, no, he had to plan that. He had to prepare that. Yeah. He had to, you know well, what I mean? I thought that you planned your family being in the front row. Okay. Like, well, there you go. Like I did, I was like, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this all is right. his thing. Hey, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, but that's, yeah, that's dope. Um. I uh, I like saxophone. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite thing you've said on the podcast so far. I, like I, you're an epic sax player, and you're like, I like saxophone. <laughs> I do. It's, it's pretty cool. I do. I do like it. Oh, but I also okay. So I have been like watching a lot of stand up in the last few years. Okay. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of like comedians I do really want to see. Um, I really like Tom Segura. He's Re great. Really enjoy Tom Segura. I've Girl. done uh, your mom's house before, uh, his podcast. I don't know oh. if you are a big podcast guy. <laughs> like, but... what did you say about my mom's house? <laughs> yeah, huh? Yeah, yeah. But he's he's awesome. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, he seems really cool. He's great. Um, he's, he's good people. 
Who else? I like, um, man, I can't remember names now. But it's all good. I the when I would love to see you and Grace Kelly live sometime. I'd love to see you and yeah. Michael Wilbur live sometime. Yeah, you, yeah. you you guys have amazing chemistry. You found a way to create unique sounds with different musicians and it's pretty cool to see. How did how did that come about where you're doing like a lot of these different projects? Because mm, yeah. I mean so, so I just I always like playing with like other saxophone players specifically yeah um just because like we just have the same and just like horn players but we just have like the same um thing going on you yeah know what i mean we, we have the same like like the way of playing it you like you can play for like long periods of time that's one thing that's nice about saxophone like especially if, if you're playing a lot all the time like you play for long periods of time and also like you can just like move through like the horn with like a pretty big ease just like jumping mm-hmm. all around and playing really fast arpeggios and there's like a technicality that, to it that really draws me in and then it's like with like like michael wilbur like with him specifically like we're just like he's just one of my closest friends mm-hmm. so it was kind of like we just would hang out and we'd just be like well we, we got to like figure out a reason to do this yeah because you know once you get busy enough it's it's hard to make time for friends you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. um a lot of the people that end up staying in your life are the people you work with. Working relationships. You yeah. know, yeah. you know, like, and then especially if like you have friends that don't live near you, it's just like. It's just, very difficult. Yeah. It's very difficult to keep up. And like Mike lives in, uh, he lives in New Bedford, Massachusetts. It's really nice. Mm-hmm. Really nice. Kind of beachy actually. Um, and so, yeah, we started working on our, pro- our project, which we call Thunder Smack. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's fun. We're. We're, we're like getting pretty close to being able to do shows. Um, it's we're, we're like, we have like an hour's worth of music right now. Um, That's great. So yeah, exactly. We're moving that direction. And then Grace, um, it was just like, I that was the only person that like really was like into doing like choreography with me and yeah. like doing little like dances and saxophone stuff. And um, the thing about Grace is like, she's just one of the hardest workers I've ever met. Um, I love, like, I find myself gravitating towards people that, you know, like to work and, and kind of just like, um, like, like work towards like something that's fun and like have fun working. If that makes any sense. Yeah. Oh, totally. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm drawn to driven people and yeah, comedy. Yeah. yeah. If, if they, and, and we have the same sensibilities and we have the same, we, we, we connect on a wavelength, mm-hmm. like. I want to work with that person. Yeah, yes, exactly. Yeah. It just feels like seamless. Like, yeah, it's, it's not forced. It's, it's yeah. not like, cause you know, you go through that where you, you try to work with certain people and mm-hmm. you're like, ah, oh, this just isn't as easy as it should be. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, and if you're in like a working relationship where someone is just like, like if I'm work- working with somebody and they want to chill more and they're kind of like, oh, we'll do that later, that kind of vibe. It's really easy for me to be like, yeah, you're right. We will. Yeah. And then just hang. You need someone to you push know? you yeah, as exactly. much as you yeah, exactly. want to push I yourself. Need, yeah, I need a little like yeah. some. So she just like is a really hard worker. I really like believe in her. And like, you know, I want to, I want to not tour as much. So I have to find separate outlets to make yeah. money. Because until like, Two years ago, I would say like 90% of the money I made was from touring. And now, I mean, I mean, I haven't toured for two years. So, yeah. so 0% of my money is right, from touring. Right. But like uh, when I get to touring regularly, I want to completely chop it in half. Like I was doing eight or nine months a year of touring. That's a lot. I know. I know. I and, go on the road a lot and that's that's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was doing. Like, yep, hustling on the road. It's it's hard. It's hard. I mean, it was a lot easier when I was twenty one. A of course. lot easier. You know, of course. it felt natural then. Like I was like sleeping on a couch, eating pizza, right? Drink a bottle of well, wine. You, well, you don't pay for it the next day. Yeah, you're exactly. reset instantly. You're like, okay, yeah, I'm cool. I can yeah. have another beer. Like, yeah, right, right. You know, and so now it's like I want to tour four months a year. Like that's what I kind of told my band was like. Like, I want to move to four months a year. Yeah. And I want to get less than that, even. Of course. Um, so, 
now it's cool. I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to balance it. And yeah, like, so you're figuring out, you got the workshops and stuff like that. And you got, yeah. um, you got some dope merch that you just yeah. dropped. Yeah, I got yeah, one merch. of your, uh, your throwback subway okay. shirts. Sick. I didn't want to wear it tonight because I was like, that'll be a little bit much, but <laughs> I'll tag you in a different yeah, post. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Down, down That's dope. Line. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I appreciate that. They, they turned out awesome. Yeah. They turned thanks. out really good. Yeah. Shout out. Uh, Raina did the artwork. It's uh, really Raina, cool. Raina Salt. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you know, um, just trying to figure out like different ways and like um right now i like check out my youtube channel um yeah it's just leo p um right now i've like also you're just a, a super fun follow on instagram yeah yeah leo p follow me like if you're not following him on instagram you got yeah. to it's like it's an instant day brightener like when yeah. when i see you like jamming out on music and songs mm. like that i'm like yeah it gets me amped yeah, yeah. yeah. so Basically, what happened is like a lot of the YouTube videos that went really viral, I did not own, and like my band did not own. They're just some other one, other some random person posted them. Who uploaded them? Yeah, and yeah. So like sometimes, like I mean, some of the views, some of the like videos have been on like fifteen million views, like twenty three million views, like could, could be so much money in monetization. It really could. Yeah. But like, it's not even on my channel, and the people that post them don't even have enough subscribers to monetize it. So it's just. <sighs> No one's making money off it. So is it a thing where you can rip it and just throw I, it up I, on I your channel? I could do that and I should do that. I have been meaning to do that, to be honest. I, as, you have to do that. Okay, okay, yeah, you're right. Like, you're not right. just like, you like, this. that's just yeah. like coming from somebody who, I, I make a yeah. little bit of my living off of the monetization mm -hmm, stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's super important, especially if yeah. you're, yeah, dude. Yeah, I'll do that. Because you, you already did the hard work of, doing the talent and like yeah. people already have seen it and your fans and stuff will be stoked to support you in that way yeah, and they'll yeah. start sharing it because it's from your channel yeah, yeah. so you'll see new life breathe mm -hmm. into those videos from years ago that's a good idea yeah i mean that's some unsolicited advice that i, I no no just, that's, that's great i mean I, yeah. Yeah, i'm trying to i'm trying to grow my youtube that's another way to make money um and too many zoos honestly like we never really even worked on our youtube at all and we have like 200,000 subscribers like well you know you guys are that dope yeah, I mean that, that's just what happens. Yeah, when we didn't you're that even good. try. Like we didn't, really didn't even try. So recently, we're trying to do more YouTube stuff. We just did a Nirvana cover. Some of your produced music videos are awesome. Oh, thanks. They're really Thank cool. You. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we have fun with that. So just as a team, like all three of us, like we don't we don't want to like tour eight months a year. Like none of us want to do it. Sure. So we're we're figuring out like new outlets. Um, and of course, like. I know like eventually I'm going to like, like miss, like if, if I, if I don't, if I don't tour at all, I'm going to be like miss shows, you know what I mm -hmm. mean? Um, but uh, yeah, we want to tour a little bit less. So we're working on YouTube. We're trying to like figure out the right, cause like even within YouTube, it's like, do people want to see me like hanging out? Like, like buying a slice of pizza or like they want to see me like trying on clothes. Like, I don't know. You know what I right, mean? Right, like, right, right. I don't know. Like, I think you'd be surprised. Yeah. I think yeah. you'd be surprised. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I did. I did put a, a workout video in um, on the Too Many Zoos uh, YouTube, and it's doing pretty well. So sure, I was surprised. I was like, okay, I'm, I'm, sure. I'm sure people are wanting to know your your workout regimen yeah. because s me as a sax player, like on the lower level of the spectrum, when I watch you do those extended videos where you're kicking your legs <laughs> and you're dancing while also keeping like this pulse on like just tonguing crazy fast into mm -hmm. your sacks just me i respect that on an athleticism level because it is if, if you're not in the know like it requires so much breath just for me to play my little alto sax mm -hmm. and for a baritone i've never even blown into a baritone I, I like and i know like i have a tenor and that takes you know a little bit more obviously each step yeah. up yeah and it's a lot like of you know core and just like and everything and yeah. and so like hats off to that it's it's, it's cool to see just on an athletic level like oh this guy's not just crushing music but like athletically it takes yeah. so much i don't even know how, how many years did that take to ramp up because you got to be in good shape for that yeah it was mostly like i used to play in the subway for like six hours a day for like three years yeah did so. you did you when did you stop getting the the thing on the bottom lip where oh, the uh, ring like yeah that 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 thing it's just because like i haven't been playing as much like the last like year or two you know mm -hmm. like it's like i've been working on a lot of different things like i've 
mostly been working on just trying to like produce my own music. Yeah. You know, I, I eventually, I want to be able to DJ like, okay. Um, I want to be able to play like DJ and play sax. Oh, you that'd know? be cool. And like be kind of like a party thing, you know, yeah. like, um, in general, I just, I want to be able to like show up by myself mm-hmm. and like make people dance and have a fun time. Yeah. Um, and it's like, I always hear these like cool, like house tracks, with like sax. And I'm like, I could do that. You oh, know? of course I could spin a little yeah, bit and yeah. do some sax. Why not? So I'm like, I'm like working on that and I'm working on teaching and building a curriculum and trying to like really understand it. So I really just haven't been playing as much, which has been kind of nice. You know what I mean? Yeah. Having a little bit of a break. I was talking about, I get this lip thing and this is just from, because my mouth isn't conditioned as well as it should be right here this oh, the sore oh. the you know that uh that happens yes, when yeah, yeah yeah that i if i do like all, every once in a while i'll record something like for a session or something yeah and i get that where it's like yeah i'm like oh my lip is gonna fall it's gonna yeah. fall off i just think like yeah just from those years just of, reps of playing yeah i used to practice like crazy too like i i've gone through like certain parts of my life have been like super like obsessive yeah. playing saxophone yeah um especially like once i started like gigging and playing the subway and it just i just became stronger and stronger and stronger sure um but i i've had to like i went through a lot of different issues like i had a lot of neck issues i had a lot of back issues i've had to like really learn from the, from the strain of, yeah. of of you know the dancing with yeah. that kind of weight on you yeah yeah it really caught up to me and like um i started going to chiropractor acupuncture and like deep tissue massage Mm -hmm. and just kind of like really working my posture um if i'm playing like short little things like i just i just noticed my next draft still on so funny um if i if i play short little things um like we just did Mm -hmm. next draft's fine but if i'm doing a show i'll put a harness on sure you know i mean that's the, the, the idea behind people who are cinematographers and stuff is like if you're getting little quick shots with the camera, that's one uh-huh. thing that's heavy, but like you need a rig after a while, otherwise your neck yes. and your shoulders are gonna get all messed up. Yes. So, yeah, so, um, yeah, I used to just not be, I like saxophone. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's your next merch shirt is i like saxophone uh okay right yeah i like it then we're thinking i like it uh i reached out to people online they reached right back um and they sent in questions for leo p first question comes from kyle man warren how much does he bench (laughs) okay okay um how much do i bench okay uh let's see okay let me just do the math because I have to like do the 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 forty five. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I know. I know. Um, <laughs> I'm uh, my deadlift's much more impressive, but my bench is like um, I think there's like my legs because like just from like dancing. But let's see, I bench um forty five. I go to Plant Fitness, you know, and at Plant Fitness I do like so there's a bar, then two forty five, so there's ninety is one thirty five, and then two tens, one fifty five. And they do five. So I won 65. Okay. Yeah. Heck yeah. Um, Maximitis444. Walk us through your foot dancing. Are the shoes important? Because I've seen you rock a bunch of different shoes. So yes. are they important? Are the shoes important? Yes. Well, the combination of the suit, the shoe, the combination of the shoe and the surface are important. Yeah. Um, I often perform. It depends on where I'm performing. Like, when I started playing in the subway, the spot that we would play at would actually be like slippery enough. Mm-hmm. It, it's all about the slipperiness. I need slipperiness to kind of like shuffle around yeah. and do my Carpet thing. Carpet is hard. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um. So what I do is I get like whatever shoe I want. I turn it into like my own dancing shoe. Okay. And I just go to this place uh, in New York. And this guy puts suede bottoms on the ah. shoe. Um. And then the thing is, sometimes the suede bottoms, like, they would tear up, and I'd have this trouble. So I put, this is so funny, I put a layer of super glue over the suede bottoms, and it just, like, becomes hard. Yeah. And that's what I found that I do. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. So, and sometimes I'll use other shoes. It just depends on the surface of Mm -hmm. the, you know. See, that's what I like about all this. Like, I'm I'm a a nerd with, uh, like, all the technicality with, like, just technicalities of stuff with whether it's music or comedy. So like, that's a, that's a dope, like 
interesting fact. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Oh, Ryan underscore Coon six on Instagram. How big is your closet? Dude always has different outfits. <laughs> okay, so I live. Um, I have one roommate in uh, where I live in Philly, mm-hmm. and uh, I live on like the third floor and. So, one of, I have this one room that's like my studio, mm-hmm. but it's a studio closet. That's like yeah. what it is. It's like a studio, but there's also like clothes everywhere. Mm-hmm. Then that's good uh, for sound padding. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exa- exactly. That's the thing. It actually yeah. works really well. Yeah. Um, I've never got a noise complaint ever, and there's like a lot of families that live near me. I'm pretty surprised. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so, I have clothes at like you know usually pretty organized, but like everywhere like and things are just like hanging on my walls and just like giant clothes racks then um there is a huge closet in between the rooms that i put more stuff um then my bathroom is like filled with like you know tubs of clothes Mm -hmm. and then my room has like a clothes rack and like a cabinet with clothes uh like my like bedroom and then uh, and a few bins too storage bins and then I have another, then I have like two or three storage bins on the first floor of the house. And then I have like four storage bins in my basement. Wow. That is, it's a lot. I just, the thing is I've just collected them from like, like eight years of do touring. Do people, because you have a, a, a cool style, do people like uh, sending you stuff or do people like? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I get sent stuff and given stuff. Yeah. Um, so yeah all that stuff accumulates over the years yeah it's also like pretty easy to sell stuff that's another thing i've done the last few years yeah why not yeah if you've already if you've done a big show or whatever in it it's like well burn that one yeah yeah yeah, exactly yeah so you know um yeah i've gone some free clothes and free shoes some free stuff over the years but i mean i have just like a buying clothes addiction it's just like when i'm on tour i'm just like you see something and you're like, ah, like, yeah, get exactly. that. And you're amped up like, I'm like, out on the road, I'm yeah, doing stuff. Yeah, I'm in London. Like, I have <laughs> yeah, to. I have to, man. You know? Yeah. It's like, it's just so easy. So, like, I just always come back with a giant suitcase full of stuff, you know? Um, it, I... <sighs> <laughs> I like saxophone. <laughs> <laughs> I like saxophone. Yeah. I'm definitely getting to a point where, like, I, I need to have, like, at least, like, half as much. Like I well, need it's hard to, start, to travel, right? Yeah, it's too much. Yeah, because I when I even when I just take merch on the road, it's 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 a headache yeah. because it's a lot. It's an extra big bag that you're yeah, checking yeah. and stuff all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It, it's just I I want to have less clothing. I mean, part of it is because I like dye my hair a lot of crazy colors, and it's like, oh, I only have that one shirt in that exact blue. Right, that, right, what, you right, know? right, right. And it's like I don't know, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's like i feel like i created like a monster and i'm all i'm already that i can't it's like i can't yeah, yeah you know yeah. what i mean it's like yeah. you're like can i just wear beige once <laughs> yeah i know I, i'm like really like that like it's so right. funny i'm like on my free what do you, what time, do you wear wearing... when you're just chilling nobody around um like what's your what's your go-to because i'm all i'm a basketball shorts guy and then yeah. a loose t-shirt that's just what i do yeah um so I like to wear hoodies. Like, I really like hoodies. Yeah. There's something so, like, comforting about Heck a hoodie. Yeah. And just, like, uh, you know, having a little safety blanket, you know, over your head. Of course. Um, and so I have these. I'm very particular about, like, my clothes. Even if they're, like, chill clothes. Like, I'm very particular about them. I have these, like, velvet shorts that I really like. <laughs> um, I like, <laughs> like, when you're not, you know, going far out. Fashion wise, what do you wear? It's just, it's just when I'm chilling, velvet shorts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I use black velvet shorts, and that stuff is like it's like mad comfortable. It's yeah. Like, I'm like, Ugh. <laughs> yeah, that's right, that's right. Yeah. Let the boys air out, right? Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I like uh, just tank. Like I, I mean, when it, when it's summer, I'm just wearing a lot of tank tops and like short. I like short shorts, like sure, make like hilarious, like you know, like like 80s like high short shorts of course you know <laughs> how often do you get um a tim capello uh comparison oh, okay. yeah a lot, a lot a lot a lot i mean more recently because i've been working out a lot more in the last like year right um 
when I was skinnier, not really as much. Yeah. Or when I was a little bit chubbier, not really as much. But uh, recently, it's like, okay. Is that somebody that you would want to meet in person someday? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I'm down. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That'd I would be love cool. to make a really weird video with him. I think he'd probably be down, dude. Yeah, you know, I never he really has, tried. He has a sense of humor. He he yeah. went on um uh, my buddy Big J Erickson and, and Dan Soder's uh, podcast, The Bonfire. Okay. And uh, he has a good sense of humor about it. And he like does cameos and stuff now where he's like, he's still like going crazy, like yeah. playing sat. Like, I, th- I think he'd be down. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm into it. I'm into it. Yeah. yeah. Heck yeah. Um, this is just, this is just a funny question. Uh, note a real, not a real dick pic on instagram great handle uh do they hand out anti-slip chair mats and paper towels at his shows or girls just enjoy their slip and slide experience yeah um (laughs) i mean how do you answer that i like saxophone (laughs) exactly that's that's the only way to answer it uh let's close it out with uh sax talk sax Okay, so let's go back to 2017. Um, it was a very great year for me. Um, I was touring a lot, and, you know, semi out of nowhere, um, too many zoos had just recorded uh, for Beyonce on her Lemonade album, right? And um, basically, uh, she asked us to perform at the Country Music Awards. Right? Right? So. Yeah, yeah. So we performed at the Country Music Awards. And um, we were all wearing these, like, crazy, like, sequiny, like, cowboy outfits. <laughs> yeah, so I bought these golden cowboy boots because, like, I really needed something that was slippery. That was one of the issues. I bought these golden cowboy boots. Um, but they're very tight. They're extremely tight. I mean, these were some tight boots. So, the reason was because, like, I, I just, I bought, like, a size slightly smaller because I was, like, worried they were going to be too big. Um, so, whatever. I did the I did the thing. Played with Beyonce. Then, I flew to uh, the UK and I was in Brighton, England. <laughs> so I was in Brighton, England, and my the band I was playing with at the time, I it was a different band than Toomey Zeus, and I had already quit the band, but I said to them that I was going to like play a few extra shows since I already said that I was going to do it. So... They were already kind of a little bit mad at me, and like I had just played with Beyonce, so it was weird. And I felt very uh, strange at the time and like uncomfortable. And what I used to do when I felt that way is get as drunk as possible. (laughs) So. I got as drunk as possible playing the show and there's this girl and like like one of the guys was kind of getting like a little bit mad at me. He was kind of like do this, do that or blah, blah, And so I had a – it was time for my big solo. And instead I just like ran to the – like uh, to the front of the stage and just – I mean I felt like a vibe with this girl. She's looking at me and I just started like making out with her instead of playing my solo. So- <laughs> So these guys like already like hate me and they're already having this trouble with me. Um, and so I'm like making out with them instead of playing my solo. They're just like, what, dude? Like, So um, anyways, yeah, I'm, I'm making this a really long story. So, <laughs> so, okay. Now, remember, I have my cowboy boots on because I just came straight from playing with Beyonce. And it's the only like real like shoes I had. I just didn't really pack well enough. So I got my cowboy boots on. Um then after the show i was like oh i'm gonna like go hang out with this girl on the because we had a tour bus i was like i'm gonna go hang out with this girl on the tour bus and they're like no like no girls allowed (laughs) so uh 
she wasn't allowed on the tour bus. It's like, let's say it's like one in the morning when the show ends, and uh, we had to leave at three in the morning. <laughs> And uh, I, I was drinking a lot, as I said. And when I drink a lot, you know, I get pretty horny. I'm not going to lie. You know, that's usually what happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I'm hanging out with her and, like, you know, the vibe is right. It seems like we're probably going to have sex, you know. That's that's how it feels. Um, and so we don't really have a place to go. It's just, like, there's people all over and, like, I can't go on the tour bus. Um I can't really, like, rent a hotel because uh, I was broke, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like – so Brighton in, in is a, a city in England, and it's like a beach town. There's, like, a beach right there. So we're, like, on a boardwalk. And I'm like, so I wonder what the beach is like. <laughs> so we run down to the beach. Um, yes. Um, and uh, I just remember, like – like thinking it was going to be like a sand beach, but it was just like a rock beach. There's like a lot of rocks everywhere. And uh, I remember we just kept on trying to like find a spot and like we just couldn't really. So we're like, okay, we're just going to have sex in these rocks. Um, So I cannot get my goddamn cowboy boots off. They're way too tight. These cowboy boots are just like I think it's because I was performing and like maybe the blood was flowing and something. I I I was trying for like five minutes, like so I was like I gotta have sex with you with these cowboy boots on. So we start off in like a missionary position, but the problem is like I can't expand my legs because I can't get my pants off because I can't get my pants down because the cowboy boots are like all over them. Um, yeah. So then it's like it, it becomes apparent like she has to be on top. It's the only way it's going to work because I, I can't get the motion that I need to to hump, you know. Um, so she gets on top and, you know, she was a little bit on the bigger side of, of things. Um, um, I mean, you know, very uh, – I was into it. I mean obviously. Um, but the rocks – were so freaking painful. And she was just knocking me into the ground. And I... <laughs> and I just, like, remember looking at my, like, cowboy boots, like, shaking and, like, feeling the rocks and being like, it's worth it. And, like, looking up at the moon. And I'm like, I'm a fucking rock star. <laughs> and so, yeah. So uh, I had sex with my cowboy boots on and... It, it hurt. It hurt. Love hurts. That's basically the, the story. Dude, you had sex on the beach. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. In cowboy boots. In cowboy boots. My, with my pants half on. With your pants. I mean, that's a real man move to be like, this is worth it. You yeah, know yeah. What I mean, you know, it's to like, like go it's through like, that. It's like no, like I remember being like, "This hurts so bad," and being like, "I don't care. This is all worth it." Yeah, yeah. This story, you know, like if the story was like, and then I was like, mm, "My back hurts." Like, yeah, you know. and we're gonna have to reconvene in another time. Yeah, yeah. Go get us your number. You know. <laughs> yeah, I can't get my cowboy boots off. Yeah, yeah. My back, my back was all messed up too. I was like, I was like, whatever. Um, but um, yeah, it's actually weird. Yeah, yeah. Never mind. I won't go into that. But uh. <laughs> I ended up I was trying to get a back massage in Germany and like couldn't like read German and like ended up it ended up being like a sexual massage. Oh. And so I was like after doing that, then I had to get like a sex massage after that. And did I'm like, they, no, I, they, I need did help. They, did they try to finish you off at the at the massage? Yeah, they did. They did. <laughs> they did. In fact they did. They did. They, they, I, they did. I just let it happen, you know. Yeah, you're like, hey, I don't wanna, you know, demean your culture or anything. I just, you know, I'm a visitor here. Yeah, yeah. I was like I was like, whatever, you know. YOLO. Yeah, YOLO. Yolo. Exactly. Yolo. Yeah. Um, well, dude, thank you so much for doing the pod. I figure we could uh, close out with a little jam. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, Let's do it. Yeah. Get this in. Is there anything you want to plug or anything before we do that final uh, jam? Um, yeah, just uh, Toomey Zoos just came out with a cover of 
um, Teen Spirit by Nirvana. It's really cool. Yeah. Check that out. Um, and in general, just, you know, Leo P, my YouTube, I'm trying to grow. Leo P, follow me on all socials. And then Too Many Zoos, uh, Z-O-O-Z is the band that I play with the most. Too Saxy, Thunder Smack, um, also things that I do. And uh, yeah. That's all amazing it. projects, all amazing follows. I highly recommend it. Let's close it out with a little jam. Word. Yeah, dude. Thank you, brother. Yeah, thank you. So much fun. This is sick. This is yeah. Sick.